Hey everyone, Will here from All Electric, and today we're taking a look at the Aventon Avenger 2, the step through and the regular one, this model. In this video, you're gonna get my complete review after testing this out for several weeks. Let's jump right in. Since my last Aventon e-bike review, they've definitely done a really good job redesigning the box of the e-bike and how it is removed. So you just remove these little plastic pieces and then the box lifts off and the e-bike is securely still in the base of the box. Now what's also cool is the box itself can be turned into a chair, so a cardboard chair. And you can, here's a great look at what is in the box and how it easily lifts off and then you don't have to worry about the bike folding over. There's your accessory kit, which I will go over in detail. And then there's the cardboard cutout if you want to make a cardboard chair. Now, looking in the accessory kit, which is in both the Aventure 2 and the Aventure 2 Step Through, you get a pack of stickers, which I think are really cool. Ride more, be happy. Completely agree with that. You also get an instruction manual and you also get some uh, rear rack installation instructions, which did come in handy and I did take a glance at, but everything is beautifully organized in here and I definitely like the redesign in terms of their packaging and that is a huge plus in terms of where they started and where they are now. Again, you have all the tools that I don't see much new. There is a redesign with their charger, uh, it looks like, which I will go over. Uh, it is a directional charger, which is a downside in terms of, in my book, I think just a regular charger, kind of like a USB-C where it doesn't matter which direction it's in, um, is definitely far better. So you have all the parts here. If you wanna put reflectors on, you have your tool, you have your charger, and you have these pedals. The pedals, uh, when you take them out, are metal. Uh, they are pretty standard pedals, they're nothing special here, but it's nice to see that they included metal ones because this is definitely one of their more premium e-bikes from Aventon. Now, the only difference between the step-through model and the regular Event Avenger 2 is the step-through part of this frame, so that you can see there. Both have the same fenders, both get the same rear rack, both have the same motor, same battery, same controls, everything is the same except this part of the frame here that you can step through. So it makes it really nice, especially if you're a shorter rider and you can't step over the frame on the traditional model, you do have that option for a step through. I personally like the traditional model versus the step through and my wife definitely prefers the step through model. Now these beefy tires make it incredible. Now when I'm talking about these details here, this is for the step through and the traditional model since they are so similar. Now I will say the Avenger 2 colors are way better, similar to what the level two, what they did there where they updated the colors. They are just beautiful. Now on both bikes, the step through and the traditional, you get the same hand grips, not the most comfortable, but they work fine. You do have a front brake there and you have your thumb throttle as well. And that allows it to work from zero. Um, you do also get turn signals on this bike. So you do have turn signals. That's part of the upgraded model here. So they also did away with the power assist levels and now you get eco uh, or it goes off and then you have eco and tour and sport and turbo is the highest level. So they did away with levels one through five. On the other side, you have the same hand grip and your rear brake, and they have this beautiful shifter, which I am definitely a fan of, where you can use your index finger and thumb to easily shift between the gears. It's definitely very comfortable and easy to do while you're riding. Now you do also have a front headlight here and an integrated rear tail light. You just hold the plus button um, or the level up button and that headlight will turn on along with your rear tail lights will turn on as well. And those are integrated in the frame in the rear. Now on the step through model, you do get the exact same look and feel minus the center frame, but you do still have the huge fat tires and it makes it super comfortable to ride on or off pavement. Now the integrated tail lights are exactly the same, which are definitely upgraded for the 2.0 version. They kind of stick out from the frame versus the original model and what they did with the Solterra, they were kind of flat on the frame, but I'll show you in a second how if you have any sort of bag or thing on the rear rack, you're kind of limited. 
in terms of visibility there. But these tires are super beefy. These four inch fat tires make it really comfortable to ride. This front shock definitely adds to some comfort, but it is definitely lacking a rear shock if you're gonna take this primarily off-road. You can see the beautiful integrated battery that does match the frame color. So if you have the blue or gray or white, that battery is going to match the frame color. You can actually see here, I did take this in a little bit of wet conditions where the fender wasn't uh, completely you know, blocking all the moisture. So it almost like the fender needs to be a bit longer. Here is that charge port. And as you can see, it's definitely directional. So you have to plug the cord in a certain way. But I will say the cover sticks on there really sturdily uh, versus some other e-bikes that I've tested where the flap can just easily come off. Now this crank set is I would say really good. And the best part about it is, is the torque sensors. You have that instant power as soon as you push down on the pedal versus a cadence sensor. This seat is a sand, standard seat from Aventon. They've been using it for the past several years. Nothing special there. This is a new rear rack, which I did find that I really liked. It was a little bit different to install, but once it's on there, it seems very solid. But as I pointed out before, the rear tail lights are kind of tucked behind here. You can see I have two of my bags, which I'll put a link to those bags down in the description, but they're kind of tucked back under there. So I do think in the dead of night, if you had some rear tail lights, a car or somebody would still be able to see you from the rear. So you do still have that visibility. It's just not as visible and you know compared to a tail light in the rear kind of over the center of the rear tire you do have a chain slap guard here branded with a venton and the avenger is just a beefy looking off-road beast i would say that this there's no lack of power with this 750 watt motor and it does a phenomenal job off-road because of these huge four inch tires now, if you're gonna ride this on some pavement, it is definitely still comfortable. I think the rider position in terms of how comfortable it is to ride this thing is really spot on. I'm about 6'1", 200 pounds, and I found this super comfortable to ride. The front shock gave plenty of support, especially with these four inch tires on any sort of pavement. Now, when you do take this a little bit off road, especially on some you know bumpy dirt or gravel, then it does get a little dicey and I was missing the rear suspension shock. So on my mountain bike, I do have a, a front and rear suspension. So I was definitely missing the rear suspension on this and it was noticeable as my bags did bounce around and I felt myself bouncing around a lot on some really off-road rugged trails. So this is their off-road rugged, you know, sort of e-bike so i would like to see them hopefully in the next model maybe the 3.0 version of the avenger is going to have that rear shock now i was getting some noise and you can kind of hear it in the video hopefully over the wind noise but it was only when i was in a lower gear and i was in the maximum uh, torque level so the turbo setting in terms of pedal assist and when i would start to pedal it was almost like i think it was coming from the rear uh brake, I'm not sure where it was coming from. I could definitely hear it coming from the rear, um, but it did stop as soon as I shifted up to a higher level. There's that sound again, um, but very minimal and it did not happen on the step through. So I'm not sure if it's just some adjustment on this particular bike that needs to be done because on the step through model, when I was testing that out, there was absolutely no noise coming from the rear. So it could just be some adjustment that's needed. And keep in mind, like, I mean, Yes, these are brushless AC rear hub motors. This is lithium ion battery pack, so you don't need to do any sort of maintenance with it, but it is still a bicycle, so you should have it checked out by a proper bike tech or at least have a tune-up done every year, or every season that you're gonna ride it. Now, I could definitely see myself using this in terms of like a, you know, off-road, like kind of, you know, riding out into the wilderness and camping because of its payload capacity. So it can support 400 pounds. I think that is the rider and the rear rack. And so also if you had like a trailer or something like that, you could definitely take this out for a longer excursion style e-bike trek or e-bike ride. And it was definitely comfortable enough to do that. And I feel really confident also in this bike off-road. Again, I'm just kind of nitpicking here and I want that rear suspension maybe because I'm getting old, but maybe, you know, you can kind of see the bikes bouncing around a little bit, but overall riding this thing and getting on it, 
is phenomenal. I will touch on the kickstand a little bit because that's pretty important. I noticed that the kickstand on this uh, was the exact same kickstand on the step through, even though this one is a little bit larger. But getting on and going in terms of the throttle, I wanted to see more response out of the throttle. I would say that I didn't have full power, although I did connect it to the app and unlocked all the power. So make sure if you do get one of these, connect it through the app, super simple to do, and that way you can unlock the top speed. But I found myself, especially in an off-road scenario where I wanted to have more torque instantly. So as soon as I pushed down the thumb throttle, I wanted to see all the power available. And so I did do that in the turbo pedal assist mode um, and I did it in the lower modes, but I didn't have any difference. And look at that, I found a golf ball. Huh, I love finding golf balls. Okay, back to the bike. So overall, really comfortable to ride, especially on any sort of off-road or you know mixed use so if it's a trail or not a trail and the torque sensor is a huge upgrade so if you're looking at this one versus the just the regular avenger one this torque sensor is in my opinion underrated so as soon as you start to pedal and you push down on the pedal you have power so you don't have to wait for revolutions of your crank set in traditional cadence sensor. So I'm so glad to see Aventon move. It looks like all their models are moving to the torque sensor, which I think is a huge upgrade. So overall, in terms of like, this is a big bike, but I will say that it was still easy to ride and it was still fun to ride. So even though this being a big bike with big fat tires, I'm about 6'1", 200 pounds, and it is still fun to ride. And I know it's hard to see here on the screen, but I was able to see, I got this up to 31 miles an hour and that's maxing it out for sure. Um, this is only rated to go up to 28 miles an hour on pedal assist, definitely going downhill a bit there uh, before I slow down uh, to go around this little curve here. But overall, it's pretty nimble in terms of riding this thing and it feels great. And the step through is no different. Riding the step through I feel like is very similar to riding the other model because all the parts are basically identical. It just gives you as the rider the ability to either step through the frame, which is great for shorter riders, or it's just like my wife prefers the step through model because she gets to get on and off a lot easier. It's also better for newer riders because you can kind of put your feet down and you're kind of closer to the ground if you just want to stand up and you don't have to worry about that taller frame kind of sitting there like in the traditional model. Now taking this to a kind of car run through dirt area, you can just see how bumpy this is. And I'm definitely on this type of environment missing the rear shock. You can, I'm trying to show you the guys this so you can see just how bumpy it is without the rear shock. Now the front shock was doing all it could, but it doesn't support the rear of the bike. So the bags and my butt was bouncing around on this type of environment. But any sort of paved path or any sort of traditional bike path, even like if it's dirt or gravel, this thing would still do a fantastic job. And I think that's what it's kind of designed for. But if you try to take this off the paved path or off a traditional path, you know, this is a big e-bike. As you can see, I'm trying to navigate this tight area just to kind of show you guys how this huge e-bike does operate. Uh, I did get actually caught on a tree there, but you, it is possible. So if you wanna do like some backwoods hunting or camping, this is possible in this e-bike. And it is, you know, really good, but this is definitely where I noticed that the throttle wasn't as responsive as I was hoping it would be. Especially with this being an electric motor, I would wanna see that if I push the throttle down all the way, I get full power, but it just wasn't the case. It would give me a little power and then ease up to that full throttle. Now, speaking of the kickstand, when I first got this kickstand uh, from, first got the bike out, I did notice that it was leaning really far over, uh, way more than the step through version. And so I was curious as to why, but then I did figure out why. Uh, when I pulled it up, there was actually some adjustments because I was having an issue with the bike kind of almost falling over because it was just kind of leaned too far over. It definitely needed to be adjusted a few inches up, kind of like you see here. Now, if you do flip up the kickstand, you can see that there is a little adjustment here. You can easily use the Aventon tool and slide this to your appropriate mark and then tighten it back 
down. So I did raise it up. And then after I've made this simple adjustment, I flipped down the kickstand and have not had an issue since. It does lean over significantly less and it definitely feels more stable. Nice to see that adjustment there for their kickstand and it was easily been able to fix. I know that is minor, but I just something that I wanted to point out to you guys. All right, there you have it. That is my full review of the Aventon Avenger 2. If you want to pick up either this model or the step through, click the link down below in the description. It might save you money and it supports this channel. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Share this video with a friend and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.